Hey YouTube, Sentinel H here bringing you my very first tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a fully automated system for running a Railcraft steam boiler on lava. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, ignore all this. Um, this is just representative of the lava supply. Um, just to let you know off the bat, this thing requires a lot of lava. It goes through it real fast, so you're going to want an infinite lava supply. Um, pumping it in from the nether or from a mistcraft age of some kind uh, would be preferable. So to start off the way this works, um, this boiler is made with solid fuel fireboxes and this is a low pressure boiler just so it would heat up faster for demonstration purposes but you can use high pressure, it's just going to take a really long time to heat up. Um, I raised it off the floor so you could see how I'm supplying it water, just an aqueous accumulator uh, underneath the boiler. One accumulator will ha produce enough water to run a single boiler uh, indefinitely. No matter how hot it gets, it'll always be enough water. Um, so the way this works is that the solid fueled firebox will run on buckets of lava or cells, but if you use cells, the cells are destroyed. So if you use buckets, you get the buckets back. That's why you need to use buckets. So the system uses a liquid transposer to take the lava from our lava supply pipe and put it into buckets which then get dumped uh, straight into the boiler because the transposer will do that uh, by itself um, as long as you place it right up against the uh, the steam the firebox um, this conduit and this engine once the boiler starts producing steam um, you can use the boiler to power the transposer. Until that point, you're going to have to power this some other way. Um, I was using just a redstone energy cell, uh, but you're going to have to power this some other way until this starts producing steam. Um, once it does, this is a, I just used a commercial steam engine. Uh, it produces four megajoules, Minecraft joules. I always say megajoules. Four, four Minecraft joules a tick, which is what the um, transposer uses this conduit is just there to make sure that this can never explode. I don't actually know if steam engines from Railcraft can explode or not, but with this conduit in the middle, it never ex will explode, and it keeps this uh, at a steady 4800 rather than having it fluctuate up and down a whole bunch. So we're going to skip this for now, and we're going to come around back here. So getting the empty buckets out of the boiler, because what happens when a bucket goes into the boiler, it goes into this slot, and once it eats the lava out and puts the the heat in here, uh, it puts the empty bucket down here, and that can be sucked out of, I believe, any side, probably, yeah, any side, um, with a red, a wooden uh, transport pipe, and I have an autarkic gate on it set to, when redstone signal is off, energy pulsar. If you don't have autarkic gates, you're going to need to use two redstone engines. Um, and they have to be uh, heated up to yellow um, before they work perfectly. So two redstone engines uh, at yellow heat or an autarkic gate to pull the buckets out and put them into this chest. You have to have a chest. Um, I guess you could probably use some other buffer, like the buffer, but I, I don't know about the buffer. So just a chest works great. Any kind of chest, uh, have the buckets go in. Right now I've got a stack of buckets as a buffer in this chest, but this has been stable, completely, completely stable. So this number always goes between 15 and 16. So if you want to have fewer buckets, you don't need to have a whole stack of buckets sitting in this chest. Um, I just have that for safety. I'm not really sure how many buckets are circulating through the system, but you're going to need at least a stack of buckets. But once you have those buckets, you know, they'll be reused forever. They never get destroyed. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good investment. So we have now a way to put the lava into buckets and put them in the boiler and a way to pull the empty buckets out and these blocks are what take the empty buckets you, you can see put them into the transposer and what this is is a filter some redstone pneumatic pipe and uh, a, what's it called regulator so the way this works talk about the regulator first is that when you build this, you place the regulator, you have to place it right against the transposer, and then you click this button to change it to this shape. And when you put 16 buckets in this left slot, and then 16 buckets in this 
write slot. What this slot is saying is it's checking. When you put buckets in here, it's checking the transposer to see how many buckets are in this slot up here. And if there are fewer than 16, then it calls for additional buckets. So because this will never hit 16, this will keep pulsing. And even if it does hit 16, um, like if your system got backed up or something, and this completely filled up with buckets, that's not the end of the world because this will still pulse on bucket 16, and it will pull a 17th bucket out of this filter, which will go into here. So then as soon as there's space in the transposer, the bucket in here will go in, and it'll output, it'll uh, emit a signal. Um, because every time the regulator pushes an item through to its connected inventory, uh, it emits a redstone pulse. Um, so by using the redstone pipes, then every time this pulses, it repulses the uh, filter and requests an additional bucket. Um, and you need to have buckets over here because that's what's telling the regulator that this is the item that you're looking for. Although I'm not 100% sure if you need it there. Um, I think when I didn't have it there, it didn't work. So that's just how I have it set up. Um, the filter is real simple. Just place a bucket in here so that to tell it that that's the only item it wants to pull out. Even though that's the only item it's ever going to get out of this system, I still I put a bucket in here. So you need to have the small there's a the filter has a small side and a big side and the big side you can kind of see that there the little plus looking thing has to face the chest and the small side has to face the um, pipe and the same with the regulator the regulator has an input and it has an output so it has to face this the right way this is the Sortex Fanver texture pack so these don't look like this um, if you're not using that texture pack but I don't know why you wouldn't it's a really good texture pack but um, you gotta have these turned the right way. But since you have to hold shift to place the uh, regulator against this anyway, as long as you're standing over here, it will always place in the right direction. So that's pretty simple and pretty pretty easy. So that's actually the system. It's actually really simple. Um, you just have to have a lot of lava because of the way these boilers work is that um, when the boiler is first heating up, you see this, the, the heat here. It doesn't produce steam until it hits 100 degrees C, and then it starts producing steam. The lower this va uh, value is, the less fuel efficient the steam boiler is. So while it's heating up, because there's a slight delay between the um, buckets, uh, there's some heat loss. So you saw, yeah, you saw it right there. You're seeing it right now. The, the heat went up to 166, back down to 165, then it went back up to 166, now it's stable. Because because of the delay, because lava buckets won't stack, and the transposer can only send one at a time, uh, it's got a little bit of a heat loss. So it's not very efficient, but once this gets heated up enough, uh, this will start to go down slower, and these will be a little bit more useful. The problem is really that the lava buckets only grant um, 1, 1k uh, heat whereas something like coal coke will produce uh, a lot more like I think it's 32,000 don't quote me on that um, but it's, it's a lot more so now you're gonna wonder what you can do with this but well, you can do with this anything you can do with the regular steam boiler so you can you can um, power more of these steam engines to make uh, minecraft jewels or you can power a um, electric turbine to get EU. And just to show you that, because it's actually my favorite way of generating EU. I don't know why, because there's so much simpler ways, but I just I love these things. I'm gonna place down just a really big storage unit and some uh, some of this, and I'm gonna build the steam turbine housing. And then we have a steam turbine, and I've forgotten the rotor. Turbine rotor. Put that in. Why isn't it working? The last time I attached this, it worked. Um, 
Oh, there it goes. Well, that was really weird. Now, yep, now the output's up to 100%. It should hit. Yep, 100%. So that was really weird. A uh, bit of a delayed reaction there. Um, confusing the heck out of me. But yeah, the uh, steam turbine will run at 100%. And it will also run the commercial steam engine to power the transposer. So one low pressure boiler running off of this lava system is enough to power a turbine. If you're going to attach other types of steam engines, then I, I honestly don't know how many of those you can put on uh, before you'll start to you know, run out of steam. Um, all I know is that you can power a turbine, and the turbine requires like something crazy, like 320 steam per tick to run it 100%. I think that's it. It's something crazy high like that. So if it can run this and it can run that at the same time, it can probably run a quite a few more. So this is um, this is the the simplest system I know of. Oh, oh, wait, right, 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 right. I do have one more thing to say. Um, this is important, actually. You need to have two pipes here. There has to be two pipes between the filter and the regulator. Um, I, I'm glad I remember that, because if you don't, it's not going to work right. If you shifted this over and you only had one pipe here, what's going to happen is that the regulator is going to fill up and the liquid transposer will completely fill up and I'm not really sure why it did this but uh, when I only had one pipe here it would run for a while and then quit and then I'd have to restart it this would be empty this would be empty and this wouldn't be triggering anymore so I don't really know what it is because it seems to me like it should have reset but it didn't so with two pipes here it works perfectly fine um, if you if you couldn't have it this close, or if you wanted more pipes here, then what you're going to have to do then is fiddle around with it and and tell this filter to pull more buckets out. Because if you put more buckets in this filter inventory, it will pull out that many buckets every time it gets a signal. So if I put a second bucket in there, then it would be pulling two at a time. With two pipes between the filter and the regulator, pulling one bucket at a time is ideal. It, it keeps this, see, roughly when this is finished, another bucket goes in. So there's very little, there's no downtime really with the liquid transposer. As soon as it's done, another one goes in. So it's, it's pretty optimal. Um, so that's important, don't forget. You have to have two of these pipes here. Um, no more and no less. I mean, like I just said, you can have more, but you have to figure that out yourself. And if you have three, or if you have three, it's probably not going to be um, ideal. I would imagine that you're going to have to increase this by multiples of two. Because if this was four instead of two, then having uh, this pull out two buckets at a time would probably work. But I'm not going to speculate on that right now. So this was a tutorial. This is how this is a fully automated system for running a railcraft steam boiler off of lava buckets. You could use this in the nether. You could use this in a mistcraft age that has uh, lava oceans. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know if this is entirely practical because of how much lava it uses, but it's fun. And th if you ever wanted to figure out how to run a steam boiler on lava, this is how you can do it. Um, this is the simplest way I know to do it. So I've been Sentinel-H, signing out.